Um, so welcome to the Pentiac Wilderness YouTube channel. Um, on today's video, I'm going to go through sort of my approach to solar power solutions at the cabin, and I'll take you through what I started out doing, uh, and then I'll focus on the kind of the next transition in my solar power solutions, and then in the next video down the road, we're going to go through what I'm actually doing now at the cabin. Um, a bit of a disclaimer, I am not an electrician, I don't know a whole lot about this topic and the way I was doing it and am doing it may not be the best way, but it is the way I've been doing it and hopefully um, what I've learned along the way will be helpful to anyone watching this. In this part of the video I'm going to show how I started out taking energy from the sun through a solar panel um, and storing it into a deep cycle battery. Um, so this is a fairly simple process. So in order to convert the solar energy into stored energy, I'm using a charge controller. Uh, the charge controller has uh, an input from the solar panel and an output to the battery. So I'm going to connect the solar panel to the solar panel portion of the charge controller. And then using these alligator clips, I'm going to connect the battery portion of the charge controller to the battery. Red on positive, black on negative. And if you look closely at this charge controller, most charge controllers have something approximating this. Um, there's two lights, one's for charged and one's for charging. And uh, we're kind of in bright sun right now, but if you come over top here, you can see that the charging light is lit up. Um, so this very basic setup will allow solar energy from the sun to be stored in a deep cycle battery, uh, which then can be used to power um, certain electronics. So this was my most basic setup. Uh, the next thing I added into this was a second solar panel. I got one as a Christmas present. And so by adding another solar panel, it allows you to charge your uh, power bank or your battery quicker. Um, so in order to uh, add in the second solar panel, I bought this solar hub uh, at a store called Canadian Tire in Canada. And what this allows you to do is connect up to seven different solar panels into one device. And then this device connects to your charge controller and then your charge controller to your battery. I'll take my original solar panel, I'll plug it in to the charge controller, or sorry, to the solar hub. And take my new solar panel plug it in to the other side. So now I have two solar panels coming into this solar hub. The solar hub has certain limitations, so it has a maximum amperage of 30 amps and a maximum wattage of 450 watts. My solar panels are 40 watt and 100 watt respectively. So next, now that I have input coming into this hub, I will take my charge controller plug it in to the output of the solar hub and then the charge controller I connect to these alligator clips which are connected to the battery and now I have more energy charging the battery up until a certain maximum uh, which is what this charge controller will allow into the battery at a given time. Okay. So now I'm going to show how to, or I've already shown how to convert solar energy into stored energy in the battery. Now I'm going to show how to take this battery and convert it into usable energy for charging a battery or an electronic device. Um, for this video I'm using a, a deep cycle battery, a fairly small one. Um, and I often use a larger deep cycle battery with the typical two uh, terminals on the top like a car battery. So in order to convert this energy into usable energy, uh, the first thing I started using was this uh, inverter. Um, so um, when I'm using a, a normal deep cycle battery, these two terminals can just sit on top of the battery, positive on positive, negative on negative. Um, for today, because I don't have uh, the typical deep cycle battery, I'm going to connect this battery to the inverter using a pair of jumper cables, positive from the jumper cable on positive to the inverter, negative to negative, and then positive to the battery and negative to the battery. So 
Now, that should be giving power to the inverter, and you'll see the display light up. That'll give an indication of how charged the battery is. It should be around 13 volts, I believe, um, and it's reading 13. So that shows that I'm live and able to power a device. So for this example, I'm just going to show charging one of my drill batteries. So we'll take that, plug this drill battery in and give it a few seconds. And we have power lights to show that this drill battery is charging. Um, so this system you could use to charge, for example, a battery or small devices. Um, again, a disclaimer, there, in terms of what electronics you should power with a system like this, I'm not going to give you advice on because I do think there's a lot of parameters you have to take into account um, and the sensitivity of the device and if it's a higher tech or computer you may not want to. Um, again, this is just what I was doing. I used this setup for I'd say the majority of the time I was building the cabin and I did it for basically two reasons. Uh, one is I wanted to be able to charge my drill batteries and two I wanted to power a small cell phone signal booster because otherwise when I'm at the cabin I have no service and particularly on certain weekdays when I needed to be connected for my work um, I uh, I wanted to power those two things. For this whole setup if you were watching sales and stuff I think you'd be somewhere between three hundred and five hundred dollars. Um, you know solar panels are a hundred plus dollars each. Uh, a battery is probably the best part of a hundred dollars. The inverter is the best part of a hundred dollars and the wires would maybe be fifty dollars or so. So you'd be somewhere in that range if you're watching for sales you could be more or you could be less if you're buying used. All right so um, this was my initial way of powering some off-grid appliance or off-grid electronics. Uh, as I investigated it more, watched YouTube videos, did some reading, I realized that there's a way to do this with far less stuff. This system probably looks a bit complicated. There's a lot of different parts, but it does work. So I think what I'll do now is I'm just going to remove the parts that are no longer necessary in my new system, and then I'll show you the new system. Okay, so I'll turn off um, this, I'll unplug my example device and get that out of the system. In the new system, I don't need, I mean, in, in either system, I don't really need the booster cables, but I will uh, take them out of the system. In the new system, I don't need this inverter. In the new system, I don't need a charge controller, or I don't need this charge controller. So in my new system, I also don't need this battery. Um, so now I'll go through kind of the second level of off-grid power solutions that I've used at the cabin. Um, the second level is not what I'm currently using primarily. Uh, what I'm currently using primarily, I'm going to feature in a new video. Um, but now I'm going to show you uh, sort of the second level of off-grid power. Um, so what I purchased um, online was a, a Jackery power bank. Jackery is one of the companies that produce off-grid power solutions. I have no relationship with Jackery. Uh, this would be one of their probably middle-of-the-road power banks in terms of capacity and, and functionality. So with this, it replaces the inverter, it replaces the charge controller, and it's a battery as well. So it's all of those things in one. So I'm just gonna show how to connect this to the solar panels I have and show you how that works in terms of uh, um, storing energy. The commonalities between the first system and the second system is I still have two solar panels. I still have this solar hub. The difference is this cable. So what this cable is, it's two parts. Um, polarity reverser, so that's part one. And part two is a cable that um, converts an SAE connection to an 8 millimeter connection. So SAE is what my solar panels are, and 8 millimeter is what the Jackery requires for input. So I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to connect the polarity reverser to the cable. I'm going to connect the cable to the solar hub.
and then I'm going to connect the 8 millimeter part of this cable into the input of the jackery. So when you plug this cable in, you'll see two things. One, you'll see a blue light turn on on the jackery unit to indicate that it's charging. And two, you'll see the input wattage reported in the display. And here we're reading about 62, 63 watts. Uh, and then as an example, mobile phone. I'll plug it in my USB-C cable and then I'll plug in that to my phone. And uh, so my phone's at 47% and charging. So obviously this solution compared to the first solution um, is simpler. Um, you have essentially everything built into one device which uh, makes it a lot easier for packing, for traveling, um, and just less clutter. Um, the only downside of this solution might be cost, um, although really I don't think the cost is that much different. Uh, I forget the price of the Jackery unit, but I do think they're a few hundred dollars, but it's all in one. Um, so this is, uh, this is my second option um, in terms of solutions. So I wanted to go through this so people who are you know uh, thinking about or planning for off-grid power options can look at what I've done pros and cons of, of this setup versus the first setup so some benefits of this setup is that I, uh, as far as I know I think for um, more sensitive electronic devices I do think that this is probably safer you can also plug directly USB devices into this which is an advantage um, also this has the capacity for DC uh, for like a um, air compressor or something like this or a, a air mattress inflator so those are all some benefits so one downside of this uh, setup versus the first one is the inverter in the first setup you can use that on your typical car so um, you know if you had that inverter in your car and for some reason you needed to use household electricity you could plug the inverter on or attach the inverter to your car battery um, and use it in that setup so anyway all things considered of the two options I'd certainly go with this option but I hope you'll watch the video we're gonna put out um, in the not too distant future showing sort of the next level of what I'm doing now and I think I think what I'm doing now will probably be what I will do here for the foreseeable future unless I decide to really um, transition to living here in an even more full-time capacity. I hope this is helpful. Um, I hope, you know, in watching this video you'll recognize that I'm, I'm not an expert on, on these topics. This is just sort of my reflections and experience of what I've done. Um, any feedback is helpful. Um, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. I hope my experience is somewhat helpful for any of you either contemplating doing something similar. Um, and feel free to make any comments or questions. I'll do my best to answer. And, uh, and like I said, stay tuned for the next video, which I think if you found this video informative, I think you'll find the next one informative where I go through sort of a, a new setup I'm using with a new company um, that uh, I'm quite happy with. So um, thanks for watching, everybody, and, uh, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.